of the city of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and Lincoln Financial Field for Army and Navy. About two and a half hours ago, the Brigade of Midshipmen with their march on. And shortly thereafter, the cadets from West Point. What Army Navy Day would be complete without the presence of the Golden Knights? And of course, the Leapfrogs. Welcome to Army Navy, America's game, presented by USAA. This is the Home Depot College Football on CBS Sports. Good afternoon, everybody. Vern Lundquist, along with Gary Daniels and Tracy Wolfson. We welcome all of you to Army Navy, but especially to our men and women serving and defending this country in posts throughout the world. This is the 111th playing of this game over a span of 120 years. No athletic encounter annually engenders the kind of emotion we see when Army plays Navy. And that spirit, that enthusiasm, is exemplified by this young man, Steven Anderson, middle linebacker, missed last year. You think he's not conscious that Army has lost eight in a row? How can that be? How can it be that two teams that are so similar that it's been eight years now that we haven't seen a victory? And that's something we're taking to this game as, you know, it's something has to change. And all things come to an end, and that's the mentality we're bringing this week. Like, it's got to come to an end. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. I, got, I think I've got a sense of the pregame talk. You know, he's a great one, Steven Anderson, but there's uh, 60, 80 guys just like him. And the way to honor them as they honor our country with their service, I think, is to watch them play football, a game they so love today. It'll be a spectacular contest. Well, Gary, we were privileged to be here a year ago. We're going to see the same two quarterbacks. We will. Ricky Dobbs and Trent Steelman, two great ones running their offense. Let's start with Ricky Dobbs. He's kind of changed the position. He freelances a little bit. He makes plays outside of the offense. He can throw the ball all over the field. When he's hot, he's as good as there is running this offense. Trent Steelman had a rough game last year against Navy, only 16 yards rushing. Comes into this football game, he's got to make it go, but he's got a little help this year. He's got a fullback, Jared Hassan. It, to make this triple option go, Army makes the fullback go, and he's got a great one. Jared Hassan, I think, is going to get Army into the end zone. First time in four years. And now let's go to the public address announcer, Dan Baker. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the invocation by Father Edson Wood, Chaplain, United States Military Academy. And please remain standing for the singing of the national anthem by the West Point Glee Club under the direction of Constance Chase. Let us pray. Eternal God, as our nation continues to struggle near and far to defeat those who would destroy our way of life, Army and Navy meet once again on a field of friendly strife. Bless the cadets and the midshipmen of the academies. Give them a deep commitment to service and dedication. May our academies always and forever make this nation proud. Sustain all the members of our armed forces and their families and be merciful to those who have given their lives to make our nation free. Fill each heart in this stadium today with the conviction that what we do here shows the world the deep beauty of a free and proud people. And finally, Heavenly Father, hear once more the constant prayer of our hearts Bless the United States of America and those who live and die to make it for all time the land of the free and the home of the brave. Amen.
Army, and Navy. We're live in Philadelphia. Much more to come after these messages. Ours is a nation forged by heroic deeds, bonded by an enduring ideal. If America didn't have freedom, we couldn't do the things we love to do. When I think of democracy, I think about the people. Equal opportunity. Freedom for all and uh, the right to choose our leaders. I decided to serve my country because I felt that was my purpose in life, to help others. My son wants to make a difference, and he wants this country safe. You want to be part of the solution. My entire career in the Army is a mission for his people always. I'm very proud of having to lead those men over in Iraq. My husband has been called. It's what he needs to do to serve his country. It's cool to have a dad that can make this kind of a commitment. Four men. Portraits of sacrifice and valor instilled at Annapolis and West Point. They share commitment to country and the experience of America's grandest rivalry. Army, Navy, the timeless pageantry of brothers in arms. I can't think of anything more American. It's the best our country has to offer. When you run out of that tunnel, and the next thing you know, you have some jets flying over. It's just like this boom. I'd be lying if I said the lump wasn't in the throat. It's, it's such a big deal to so many people. There's nothing quite like it. Any parent that sees their son run out of that field, it, it chokes you up. A game played by heroes, inspired by common purpose and uncommon sacrifice. Clayton's everything to us. Such as a father and football coach deployed to Afghanistan, carrying with him the love of two families. My dad's going to war. It's what he committed to do. I'm not the only person doing this. There's a lot of people that say those goodbyes. A fighter, midshipman, and decorated Marine whose selfless leadership in combat saved lives. The last thing you want to do is have to go home and look a mother in the eye and tell her why you, you couldn't bring her son back. A former Black Knights captain now leading a different team at war his parents taking strength from their son. He said, I need you to stay tough. So I'm staying tough. And an army lineman and Purple Heart recipient, his courage and inspiration beyond measure. When you're fighting for freedom, sometimes there's a price to pay. And it wouldn't change a thing. It's, it's not about us. I'm playing for those men and women that make the ultimate sacrifice. The men and women that are going over there now. Um, yeah, this game's for them. Navy plays for our dad. Lieutenant Commander Kendrick Holmes. I'm playing for my brother, Lieutenant Mike Vitti. For the guys that serve their country. I'm playing for Brian Stan. Doing this for the men and women overseas. For Colonel Greg Gadsden. We're playing for our heroes. Army, Navy. One game, one Do shot. Do it for the core. Do it for my dad. It's time to get it done. Beat Navy. Beat Army. Navy, you will see. Beat Army. Beat Army. Beat Army. Task Force Raiders. Go Army. For the 111th time, it's Army versus Navy. For generations, a celebration of America's future heroes. I think a hero is someone who helps people whenever they need help and who constantly cares about doing the right thing. It is our privilege to bring this game to you throughout the world. Navy, eight and three. Army, six and five. First on the field. The cadets from West Point. Not that far behind them, up from Annapolis, the midshipman of Navy. Accompanied by the flyover. Army and Navy the seventh time in this stadium. We'll be back with a kick after this. The Home Depot College Football on CBS Sports. The Army-Navy game presented by USAA is sponsored by LG. Nissan. Verizon and by USAA yes there is uh, some emotion attached to this encounter moments ago the coin toss 
Davey, you're the visitors. What's your call? Tails is the call. I'm just going to let the uh, coin hit the ground. Tails is the call. Tails it is. You have your choice now or at the start. Now, you want to see you, you want the ball? <clears throat> Where would you like to kick from? I'd like to defend this thing, kick towards the corner. You fellas want to put your backs to this goal? You put your backs to this goal? And also, just a moment ago, Tracy Wolfson with Admiral Mike Mullen. Admiral Mullen, so happy to have you here. On your recent trips abroad, can you tell us what you've seen in the morale of the troops? Well, the morale is really terrific, uh, and, and they are making progress, particularly in Afghanistan. Uh, you know, they're really up in Iraq, so I couldn't be prouder of this great military. You're a Navy grad, so explain the importance of this game for the troops abroad in these two academies. Well, it goes back for me a long way. It's, it is a field of uh, strife. It's a great game, two great institutions, spectacular young men on the field, and they represent young men and women that are the best we have in the country. You're a midshipman, though. How are you going to stay impartial today? Well, it's hard today. Actually, my first date with my wife was in uh, December of 67 at this game, so impartiality is difficult, even though I'm a joint guy. Enjoy it. Thanks so much. Thanks. Burn back to Tracy, you. Tracy, thank you, and thanks to Admiral Mike Mullen. The weather, really nice for the second weekend in December. 43 degrees, forecast partly cloudy. As we have mentioned, the 111th all-time meeting, Navy has won the last straight, and both teams here with a winning record for the first time since 96. Today's game is brought to you in crystal clear, high definition, by LG. Matt Campbell will kick off. Marcus Thomas, number 34, is the deep man. from Philadelphia. Thomas at the five. Got some room. Slips a tackle. Knocked out of bounds, but a very positive return of 38 yards. Marcus Thomas and the kicker, Matt Campbell, made the stop. And as they take the field, Ricky Dobbs on your left, the quarterback, a senior now, Steven Anderson missed this game a year ago because of a knee injury. Leading tackler for the cadets. Middle linebacker, first down 10 after Thomas's longest kickoff return of the season. You see the fake? That is to determine it's like the quarterback reaching for the snap and the shotgun. That's how they recall the plays for Navy. Had a corner blitz look to start. Teach gets it. No. No, I beg your pardon. It's Ricky Dobbs. And uh, Dobbs on the keeper fakes to teach and comes around the right side. Ricky Dobbs, now a senior. The lineup's presented by Jeep and uh, had less effectiveness this year than he did a year ago. Well, that early game against Maryland when they were inside the 20 yard line seven times and came away scoreless five times, I think kind of got Navy off track, but they're playing their best football of the year right now. Second down six after the four yard gain by Ricky Dodds. You'll keep it. Yeah. <laughs> Guess who? Guess who? Steven, Steven Anderson. Yes, it was. Dobbs, who had two fumbles in that opening game against Maryland. And there's a battle for possession of this one. Remember, it was an early turnover last year that set up the Army team, and they did not score a touchdown. And it was Anderson who put his helmet right on the football. How about it? You sit out for a whole year and think about this game, and then you make the play on the second play of the game. Donnie Dixon, number 21, recovered. And a quick turnover gives Army the ball inside Navy territory. The quarterback, Trent Steelman. Right side, Malcolm Brown, number 23. Steelman making his 25th start today. He started all of the games in his first year 
uh, more passing yards this season than a year ago. They did, but I think they're a better running team of the triple option this year. And that goes back, Gary, to the opening. Fullback, fullback. You yeah. got to have a fullback. Second down, 11. Navy's defense is as good as any defense in stopping the triple option, though. There's uh, Hassan, the fullback. Well, fumble again. Another fumble. The other way. Navy ball. Two teams that pride themselves in not turning the ball over both turn it over on the second play of the game. Jerry Hallberger came up with it, number 31. Hands it off to Hassan. And on the turf. Well, we will uh, give you spirit messages so called throughout the day. And as we go to break, here's the first. Choosing your battle. LG, as a proud NCAA corporate partner, presents great moments in the Army-Navy rivalry. Go Navy! Touchdown, Navy! Go Navy! Go Navy! Go Navy! Navy! Best game in America! Carries into the end zone. Touchdown! Go Navy! I love the Army! It's America's rivalry. Go Army! Beat Navy! First game played in 1890 on the plains of West Point. Navy won that one 24 0 before uh, a crowd estimated at 300. The game has been played in, nine, I wasn't there, nine different cities, and it is uh, more or less a fixture in Philadelphia. Next year, however, the game will be played in the nation's capital in Washington, D.C. First down, 10. Dobbs wings it, has his man wide open. Down the near side, it's Santiago out of the backfield. Well, there's no doubt that the Army defense is loaded to stop that triple option. And I told you in the open, the difference that Navy has, Ricky Dobbs is one of the best passing triple option quarterbacks in Navy history. And what did the Navy people tell us, Vern? He's changed the position so much that they may flip their recruiting where they look for a thrower and teach them to run the option instead of an option quarterback and try to teach them how to throw. That catch good for 31 yards equals Santiago's longest game of the year. This time it's the dive of the middle. Teach number 39. And let's check the uh, naval offensive line now. Batapaglia, a senior. Cabral, Demel, John Dowd, academic first team All-American. Basford at right tackle. Greg Jones uh, at one wide out. Gigi Green, Teach, Santiago, and Brandon Turner, the other wide out. Ken Niamatolo, Niumatololo. Army is called time, which will give me a chance to practice the name again. Twelve fifteen to go in the first quarter of play, and let's introduce you to the uh, Army defense: McNary, Mackey, Mike Gann, who had a great game in this event last year. Marcus Hilton, we think he just limped off with an injury. Uh, you've been introduced to Steve Anderson, captain, remarkable young man. Erzinger had a big interception in this game last year, and the secondary: Jackson, Dixon, Travis, and King. Army Navy's inside the 20 and they have scored 31 out of the last 34 times inside the 20. Dobbs. He's got a man open. He overthrows it in the end zone. Incomplete for G.G. Green. 
Think about that. 31 out of the last 34 times inside the 20 yard line. Two field goals and one time at the end of the game they really weren't trying to score that hard. That was against Arkansas State. It wasn't a kneel down but they just kind of that, that is a remarkable statistic. And, and that was their bugaboo early. Let's see what Army can do here. Can they put pressure on the quarterback? Usually it's number 44, Josh McNary, that does it. Dobbs back. Wings it over the head of the intended receiver. Teach was looking back over his left shoulder. The pass thrown over his right. And it was a safety blitz that time. Dialed up by this Navy, excuse me, Army defense. Stevie Anderson on the, the, the coverage that time, but they brought everyone to try to get that ball out of the hands of Ricky Dobbs. 36-yard field goal attempt now by senior Joe Buckley, who will spend his naval career in submarines. Six of nine for the year, and that appears to be good. That's a win for the Army defense, though. I have to tell you that. When a team comes in 31 for 34 after a turnover and you hold them, that's a win for the defense. Navy draws first blood, 3-0, midshipman. We welcome you back to Navy Army, America's game presented by USAA. We uh, introduced you earlier to this young man, Jared Hassan. Let's hear a little bit more from him in this spirit message. Jared Hassan, class of 2013. I chose Peel to West Point to be able to lead the finest people that America has to offer, the United States soldier. Go Army, beat Navy. Well, he took a circuitous route to get to West Point. He actually enrolled in the Air Force Academy in Colorado Springs, realized after one week of classes that that was not his destiny, uh, withdrew, spent two semesters at the University of Wisconsin, Waukesha, and then uh, was readmitted, lost a year of eligibility, and has been, though, a big, big part of this Army offense. John Teague is going to kick off number 45. Jackson and Neely are the two deep men. Josh Jackson, number 14. Brought down out near the 35. And let's introduce you now to the Army offense, presented by Jeep. Mersey, whose family is from Lebanon at left tackle. Allen, Zach Peterson, Reed, and Jason Johnson complete the offensive line. Brooks, Cobbs in the backfield, Mealy. Just met uh, Jared Hassan. And Barr is the other wide receiver, Austin Barr. Vern, where is the Army going to find some points? Do they start throwing the ball, doing something different? After not scoring for three straight games, you got to find points. There's the pass. Yeah, Steelman, he will tuck it. But uh, that was the intent at yep. the snap. Tackle made by Hallberger, number 31. Defensively, Tawani. Burge, Billy Yarbrough up front. Yarbrough in his first year as a starter. McCauley, Tyler Simmons. Warwick is getting his first start ever, his third game ever, and it comes against Army. Mitchell, Middleton, he's been a star in this uh, environment for four years. Steelman lost it, got it back. You're right. He almost did lose yeah. that one. That ball, he, after he ro rode the fullback, Hassan, that ball popped up in the air. You know, I was thinking, Vern, when you were doing the lineups as we watch this play one more time, he fakes, watch the ball go up, and he has to re-grip it. It's bad news when you're Army and you have a turnover before you introduce who's playing for you in your lineups. Both, both coaches told us the key to the game is precision, and so far nothing's been precise for either offense. Third and four. into each other and that was the outside veer a new wrinkle that has been put into the army offense this year and it got nothing there's a lot of experience on the outside end men on the line of scrimmage 
defensive ends for Navy. And watch right here. It gets read perfectly to the outside. It's the outside veer. It's not inside. And just ate up that time by Aaron McCauley. Raymond Maples is the ball carrier. And uh, there was almost a bobble on the exchange. That'll bring on Jonathan Bulls, number 18. And Matt Aiken is going to return a punt for the first time in his career. Gary Myers regularly the punt returner for Navy on the injured list. So here's Aiken number 85. He's going to let this one bounce. And it takes a hop out of bounds inside the 20. And, and did you say freshman Matt Aiken? Good, good point. <laughs> 9.45 to go first quarter. 3-0. Navy. And we want to thank MetLife for providing today's aerial coverage, flying high above Philadelphia, host of the most um, Army-Navy games in history. Look for the MetLife glimpse, Snoopy 1 and 2, when they come to an event near you. Two fumbles in 11 plays. Turnovers are one apiece. And Navy will snap it from the 19. And off goes to uh, Alexander Teach, number 39. Teach for the season, junior out of Conroe, Texas, with 778 yards on the ground. I don't know if you can tell. It looks like Rich Ellerson was probably about as much of an expert on stopping the triple option defensively as anyone in the country. He's got his two defensive ends set back a little bit. And then he's hitting a lot of these with a safety right at the snap. A little different look. He always gives something different. Last year was the bear front up front and gave Navy a lot of trouble. Time out. Play clock winding down, so Ricky Dobbs calls time. Eight minutes, 59 seconds remain in the first. Ricky Dobbs now a senior, his last Army-Navy game uh, as a starter in this uh, option offense out of Douglasville, Georgia. 48 career rushing touchdowns. That's the fifth most, 40 of those in the last two years. He had 27 on the ground in 2009 and an NCAA record for a quarterback in consecutive seasons. Ricky Dobbs was uh, reminiscing with us on Thursday about going to NAPS, they call it, the acronym Naval Academy Prep School, and they uh, ran him at fullback. It was not uh, his most pleasant experience. He said, I need to go back to quarterback. A lot of out balanced line here by Navy early, trying to get, I think, the nose tackle off the center. It hasn't worked. Roll out. Dobbs goes deep. Got Could it. be caught. Yep. Yes, it is. John Howell. 77 yards. Sophomore out of Pennsylvania, only his 12th catch of 2010. Well, we talked about what Ricky Dobbs brings to the offense that the normal triple option quarterback doesn't. And they knew that Army was going to be loaded to bear to stop that triple option. And what have they done? Gashed him early with the throwing game. Over 100 yards passing already. Delahook, number 35 with the extra point. That, for the season, is the second reception for John Howell. There is a flag on the kick. Into the kicker on the defense. The penalty is declined. Extra point is good. Dennis Hennigan, the referee, a part of this Big East crew. John Howell, a 5'8", 180-pound sophomore, Got behind two defenders. Well, he did not have to jump for this one. He goes right down the gut. He gets a little action coming out, and that's what really froze that Army defense. Look at 11 guys within seven yards of the ball. Runs right by Donnie Dixon, and it's a perfectly thrown pass. Dixon cannot stretch out and make the play. 
and two big passes already. And you knew it. You could almost feel it. Remember, Navy did not score in the first half last year against Army. They opened up the second half throwing the ball. This time, Dobbs says, I don't want to wait till the second half. Yes, indeed. 77 yards, touchdown, Navy. How about that? Neither of these teams known for their passing offense. Well, the difference between the wishbone and the triple option offense that these teams run now is they've got enough receivers near the line of scrimmage that they can throw the ball. It's a great wrinkle. Paul Johnson does it at Georgia Tech, and both these teams do it here. Here is the kick from John Teague. Josh Jackson will grab it again. Balls on the ground, but the rule down by contact. You can build your own football dynasty and compete year-round with CBSSports.com franchise football on Facebook. Find out more at CBSSports.com slash franchise. So we got two of the worst passing teams in the country. One of them, at least in yardage, has shown they can do it. Army is last. Can they throw the ball? Not on this play. That's Jared Hassan, number seven, the fullback. Well, by rank, and remember, neither of these teams try to throw the ball that much. One's number 118. The one in between used to be the coach for Navy. Right, Paul Johnson. Troy Calhoun at Air Force. UCLA might be a little embarrassed by that graphic. I was just thinking that. I wonder <laughs> if Rick Neuheisel just threw an orange <laughs> at the television set. Get that out of there. And now let's go to Tim Brando for this Heisman watch presented by Nissan. Who's that tall guy on the left? Wow. My gosh. I don't know whether Cam Newton is taller than I thought or LaMichael James is not quite as tall. Look at that pursuit by this Navy defense. Matt Warwick that time, his first start, number 51, is the guy that makes the tackle, Vern. A little bit of a counter option. And Warwick, and we talked to the Navy defense and just watch these guys react. One way, they fill outside, comes across, the backside linebacker comes across and makes that play. You get used to playing it, and both staffs told us that we got to practice against each other because they we run the same offenses. That was Patrick Mealy with the carry and uh, Warwick with the tackle. Jonathan Bulls on the putt again. Matt Aiken is back. Yeah, not a good one. No. Going to give him the ball in between the 45 and 50 yard line. Ufta. Right at the 45. 21-yard punt, nothing on the return. Tomorrow on 60 Minutes. I'm just reading what's in front of me. Jerry Jones has an ego the size of Texas and is the best-known owner in American sports. So how is he dealing with losing? Find out tomorrow on 60 Minutes. Only CBS. I believe I might watch that. So what do you do if you're Steven Anderson right here? You're all just gunned up, ready to make some plays, but they won't run the ball at you. On first down, up 10 nothing. Teach for a couple. Ricky Dobbs, last drive, the longest in Army Navy series history. How about that? The longest pass. Second down eight. All of the Army coaches had one quote about Ricky Dobbs. He can break your heart outside of the offense. So far, that's what he's been doing. Second and eight. He still got it, and he powers over the left side for a first down at the 43-yard line. 
It was a tough start for Ricky Dobbs this year. Talking about that Maryland game, remember this Navy team thought they had a chance to go undefeated this year. They put over 400 yards rushing in the opener against Maryland. We talked about it five times, seven times, excuse me, they were inside the 20, five times, no points, and four times, four of those five, Ricky Dobbs made misplays. After the first down, He'll keep it and come to the right, cuts up, and uh, gets maybe one. Well, let's go back here and take a look at that. This is the season opener against Maryland. 34 seconds to go. Fourth and goal from the one. Maybe decided to go for the win, and Ricky Dobbs was stopped by Kenny Tate, giving the Maryland Terrapins the win. It was not the start that uh, this team had expected. They've lost only three, one of them after they had a huge win against Notre Dame yeah. and came back a week later and disappeared against Duke. Fell down 21 to nothing, came back and wound up losing by three. This class, the senior class, has defeated Notre Dame all three years. Dobbs, man open, diving try, incomplete. That was Matt Aiken, who's getting his first action today as a punt returner and there was the intended pass receiver. Let me show you the odd look right here that you got. This is Steven Anderson. He's almost the deepest safety on the field. He's the middle linebacker. They are just asking and begging Navy to throw the football and they're going to do it. I just don't think they can hold up against the Navy speed in the back end. Another look. And so third down and nine. Rush coming. Got a man down, tipped and incomplete. This was Greg Jones, number 84, the senior from San Antonio, Texas. And actually, that time Ricky Dobbs went to the wrong player. He got greedy. One of the things they talk about with Ricky is he kind of goes past his reads and gets greedy. Good job on the back end that time by Jones just breaking that play up for so it wasn't intercepted. And that brings on Kyle Delahook, the Hunter, 38.6 average and eight inside the 20. Josh Jackson. Great stop by that Army defense. Got the ball. Good right field position and Army answered. Got a flag down on this one. I wonder if it's a shift. It's on the far side. There was a shift just before the snap. Sure, if it's against Navy, it'll be declined. That would be the preliminary signal against the uh, midshipman. You have to be Illegal set for snap. Offense. Second, excuse me. Five yard penalty will be added to the end of the kick. First down. Army six and five, bowl eligible. They'll face uh, the ponies of SMU. <laughs> In Dallas, Gerald R. Ford Stadium lost to Air Force 42-22. That was their 10th. They lost to Notre Dame 27-3. So there's one of the teams that these two have in common, but they did come back and they are bowl eligible for the first time since 96. As a matter of fact, as uh, you look at Rich Ellerson, this is the first time that all three academies will play in bowls. Here's the handoff left side. Raymond Maples, number one. And uh, looked like there might have been a loose ball, but he's two, rolled down. We talked to Buddy Green, the defensive coordinator for Navy. He said, in the last four games, we have not been able to play our base defense. We have not been able to play two inside linebackers. So far, Matt Warwick and Tyler Simmons have been in there. They're moving in and out, in and out, trying to keep that quarterback and fullback and lineman a little confused on what the play is going to be. That's deep. Oh boy, had a man open. Yes, he did. David Brooks, number 13, had a step at the 25 yard line. Same type of look. They're going to give you these post patterns. Right here, deep, off of a little bit of an action. You can see the Navy defense. They are almost six, seven yards up at the line of scrimmage. 
A good throw here is one just like Navy completed. Quasi Mitchell was defending, and it'll be third down. Steelman, much more adept on the ground than he is throwing the football. And he'll have to throw it here. Nice cut block. He's got a man open that's a little high and ruled incomplete. Crazy Mitchell did a nice job of cutting in there. The ball might have been completed. It was not a well thrown ball as you called it, Vern. But the defender stayed with it and made sure that that ball wasn't going to get caught maybe on the second catch. High ball. Come in there and finish the play. Great defense. Army continues to look for an offense. They've had none in this ball game, and it's fourth down again. Jonathan Bulls, number 18, on to punt. Matt Aiken, who has not returned one yet. The last punt was uh, horrible, 21 yards. This one short. Nice and bounce. bounces <laughs> over. Oh my goodness. Right over Aiken's head, and that gets an extra 20 yards out of it, at least. A 55 yard punt. That's going to look so good on the stat sheet tomorrow. And right now, Gary, let's take a look at our Home Depot tools for success. Well, everything everybody knows about Ricky Dabbs. He can break tackles, run the triple option, not with precision, but he brings the other tool being able to throw the football out of the triple option look. And so far in this game, as we've been talking about, he's gashed him. And Navy has the ball. Here's the keeper around the left side for Ricky Dobbs. Army has done a good job on first down against the run. They have loaded up. The longest gain, there's been six of them. The longest gain, Vern, has been four yards on a run. Of course, the pass yes. was a 31-yard gain. Just under what they'd like. Payam Sadat. Defensive coordinator. Right. Second down, seven. Oh, oh what a... Look at that pursuit. Yes, the pursuit was excellent. I'll tell you, how do you like to be fullback in this offense, okay? You want to play fullback in the triple option? This time you don't even get the ball. Watch the hit you're going to take after we watch the bouncing ball for a second. All right, watch the fullback. Teach, you're going to get it? Nope. Well, you're going to get it. <laughs> Marcus Hilton laid it out, laid him out, and then see Steven Anderson going over the top that time. Bones Nelson got a good block out of him. Well, if you're a midshipman, life can be a day at the beach. If you're up 10 nothing. Top back pass. How about yes. This? Pumps once. He's got a man open. It is caught by Santiago, who had that 31-yard catch. That's his second reception of the ball game. And uh, the tackle made by Donovan Travis. I, I tell you, if, if the Army on third down cannot put pressure on Dobbs, it's going to be a long day. Great protection up front. He goes to about his third option on the play. No pressure at all. Santiago's catch. And uh, look, 131 yards passing in the first quarter. We've still got 90 seconds to go. Keeps it going left and picks up. Well, it looks like maybe five. Yeah. Donovan Success Travis again. Successful play. Even though that Army defense is making Dobbs pay for it, when you get those plus four runs on first down, those are successful plays. Last year, the guy that had the game for Army was Mike Gann, the nose tackle. He was almost so disruptive inside making plays. They just could not handle him. There's Mike Gann. Now this Army team a year ago here led 3-0 at the half. Gave up 10 in the third quarter. And wound up uh, losing it 17-3. As the Navy continues to move the ball. Here's Dobbs. Richard King. Boy, they're precise around here, aren't they? Uh, aren't they, though? The tenths running down. Final 
18.08. And I don't think they're going to snap another one. Well, it has been all Navy in this quarter. Army has not scored a touchdown against the Naval Academy in the last three games and a quarter now. That's the end of one. 10 nothing Navy will return to Philadelphia after this message and a word from your local station. When you run out of that tunnel and the next thing you know, you have some jets flying overhead. For Colonel Greg Gass, we're playing for our heroes. It's Army, name. One game, one Do shot. It for the core. Do it for my dad. It's time to get it done. Beat Navy. Beat Army. Navy, you will see. Go Navy. Beat Army. Yeah. Task Force Raiders. Go Army. Such a privilege for all of us to be a part of this. And our thanks to Pete Radovich, one of our colleagues, who put together what we call the tease. That is the, the method by which we come on the air. And for the second year in a row, Pete captured the essence of why this game is so important. Third down four. Navy has a 10-0 lead. And they have controlled every part of this game so far. Dobbs to pitch around the corner and that uh, looks like it might be another first down. Bird Lundquist, Gary Danielson, Tracy's down on the sideline. Impressions from the first Well, I, I think both teams understand how to stop the triple option. It's going to be tough yardage on the ground in this game. The long pass, obviously Dobbs hit it and Steelman did it. I mean, the Army right. had the same pass open. It's just two yards too long. I think that's still going to be the key to the football game. Where do the yards come outside of the triple option? And once you start opening it up, you'll see the triple option start to work. And here's the first down play. Yep, there it goes. It's Teach again, and he is giving a few lessons here to the middle of this Army defense. That's a pickup of 16 yards. And if you're a Notre Dame fan, you're, you're sick of Teach, I can tell you that. Yes. Alexander Teach went 26 carries against Notre Dame for 210 yards. The fullback, 26 for 210, and dominated the football game against Notre Dame with that play right there. Out of Conroe, Texas. And another first down 10 here. Dobbs pulls it back and puts it up. Goes deep, caught. Touchdown, Navy. Brandon Turner. Nobody in college football can throw one better than that. This was on the line, about 35 yards, a perfect strike. First touchdown catch of the year for number 86, Brandon Turner. Extra point is up and good. Number three, Aaron had decent coverage on the play, but the ball was thrown so sharply, coming right inside here. Watch how sharply the ball is thrown. Not a lot of air, he rips the throw in there, and Aaron did not have the time to make up the difference. Turner goes up, uses his body, a perfect call, precision passing. Ricky Dobbs, too hot. I'm Ricky Dobbs from Douglasville, Georgia. And upon graduation, I plan to be a surface warfare officer and then be the United States president. Go Navy, beat Army. And he's not kidding. No. He's, he's not uh, fooling around. He's going to serve on a destroyer 
uh, after he is commissioned or after he uh, gets out of the, the Naval Academy. It's going to be a tough vote between Ricky Dobbs and Army's, excuse me, Alabama's Greg McElroy in 2040. Ooh, more on that in just a second. <laughs> Thank you for the segue. Greg McElroy was a finalist for the Rhodes Scholarship. He did not get a spot. It went to one of uh, one of the two spots uh, in Birmingham that was awarded went to one of Ricky Dobbs' classmates. Her name, Carolyn Barlow. Here is the kick, and it's taken by John Jackson. And he's Ball out up. to the 34. Ball out again. Again. The one that there's no way Army had any chance in this football game unless they played a perfect game, and so far they haven't. We can even show you the touchdown play. There was a bust in the secondary on that one also. Well, we've got to determine who got the ball. Army. Yep. First, let's look at the fumble. Had one in the second play of the game. Here's the kickoff. Pops out. Oh, I thought, how did Army get that ball back? Well, it is ruled that they did. In the meantime, the touchdown. You watch right here, the free safety. Donovan Travis runs out of the play, and the other safety has to come in. You don't know for sure what the defense is, but two guys cover the slot back. No one covers the middle of the field. That's Hassan. Maybe a yard. Just not much going on for Army offensively at all. Now, I, I think this Navy defense really understands how to stop the triple option. That was Jabari Tuane right there. We met him, what was it, Thursday, right. I guess, Vern? Mm -hmm. Yep. Remember, he said to us he had wanted maybe to go to Vanderbilt. He was a great prep player. And he said, they said, I'm too small. And he said, I lucked up to Navy. Yeah. Here's the toss, Hassan going around the near side. Just to finish the thought on Tune, he was actually recruited by Furman and told us he was on the on the campus of uh, Furman University and about to accept a scholarship offer. His high school coach from Brentwood Academy called him and said, have you signed anything yet? He said, no. He said, Navy would like to talk to you. And that's uh, off the campus of Furman. When uh, Vanderbilt turned him down, he did say, I'd love for the tight ends coach, Coach Gaines and Bandy, to see me now. Right. Army still hasn't garnered a first down in this game. Still won't. Still won't. Nope. And coming into this season, that was something that Army had solved. The year before, Army was brutal on third down. You can see it again. These Navy linebackers understand it. Tune does a good job of spinning off the block, and then the tackle is made in, uh, on the outside. They just sometimes you've got guys on defense that refuse to be blocked, and that time Tune refused to be blocked. There was no cutback lane. Jonathan Bulls is on to punt. Matt Aiken yet to return one. Another squibber. Yeah. It's Aiken. working out. Yeah, it is. He got it 55 yards last time. And this one's not so bad as Aiken gets away from it. Yeah, the good news is you got a successful punt. The bad news is Ricky Dobbs is back on the field. Mm -hmm. The Army-Navy game presented by USAA will continue after this word from your local station. The men and women of the long gray line finding it uh, non-ending so far. They're down 17 nothing here in the second quarter. Ricky Dobbs back in the quarterback out of Douglasville, Georgia. He was uh, telling us about his class. They call it boats. It's really principles of ship performance. But one of his classmates in boats, Karen Barlow, was awarded the Rhodes Scholarship. She was one of two out of 12 applicants who uh, took their final examination in Birmingham. And Greg McElroy was uh, among that group. First down 10, 11.30 to go, first half. Ball on the ground yep, again. again. It is. Got a change. Army recovers. But they must 
do something with it. This is a chance for them to get in the football game for Army. Very unusual for the Navy precision. They've been running this offense for years. Quarterback, fullback, exchange. That has to be almost automatic. Teach thought Dobbs had it. Dobbs thought Teach had it. Army now has it at the 22-yard line. That was Josh McNary, perhaps the best of the defensive linemen. Ken Niamatololo, the coach, having a little conversation. Teach, a little angry on the sideline, and it's first down. Steelman pitches around the corner for a few. Well defended. Raymond Maples, number one. Oh, how long, Army, before yep. the touchdown comes. Army's last touchdown against Navy in 2006. Two seconds left in the game. Carson Williams found Tim Dunn. But Navy still won 26 And that was a bit of a garbage touchdown. This one is, will not be. They need it badly. There's the toss. Hassan. That's short of a first down by a yard. Jared Hassan, the 6'3", 235-pound sophomore fullback. I, I think it's four down territory. Mm -hmm. Take a look at the Verizon Red Zone stats for Army, 34 of 45. Third and one. Steelman over left guard looks like it's close. See what kind of spot he gets. Steelman is the third down short yardage running back. You watch tapes, watch two or three games. He keeps it almost every time on third down. So right. much so it's almost an assumed call play. Yeah. Uh -huh. Sorry, Vern. All right, it's okay. That's Teach. Don't you just have to score? Don't you, no matter, almost, unless you lose yardage here, have to get it in the end zone? Steven Anderson saying, it's got to end. They've lost eight in a row to the Naval Academy. Sprint. Steelman run all the way. Caught from behind. And dropped by Aaron McCauley, the junior number 29. But a successful play. These are going to be tough yards down here. Remember, Army does not have the precision passing game. Keep all the way. Hassan does a good job of blocking in front. Thought Steelman came up a little bit that time. Gimpy have the play. Let's watch him. Second down, five. Dancing around, there's the get inside. It's that outside veer. The yep. wrinkle that's new to this offense this year is they're going to run it one play wider. Raven Maples that time, instead of going to the fullback, they go one wider and play it off this guy out here. Watch this. Little different look. Get those linebackers thinking. Anise Mercy and uh, Frank Allen. Excuse Again, me, Gary. I, I, there's just no way I'm going field goal. I'm not going to come into this game with an opportunity to score a touchdown and think field goal. Third and two. The drought is over. Malcolm Brown, number 23, has scored a touchdown for Army against Navy. Look at that sideline for Army. Look at Steven Anderson, the middle linebacker who said it's got to end. Alex Carlton with the extra point. Dobbs and Teach still talking about the exchange. Rich Ellerson, something positive. And I got to give a kudos to offensive coordinator Ian Shields that time for Army. It was a beautiful drive. He mixed it up with the quarterback keeps. Gonna slide the guy right out there. Watch Trent Steelman roll out. Just slide the slot out there to the outside. 
Man in motion is the guy who gets the ball. A well-designed play. And Army, as Vern said, ends the drought. Andrew Teach, whose fumble set up the short drive. Rich Ellerson, in his second year as the head coach at West Point, on the board in Philadelphia. Beautiful and historic city of Philadelphia, America's game presented by USAA. Navy leading Army 17 to 7 and not far from the downtown area. The sports complex here in Philadelphia, one of the highlights of which is this venue, the Lincoln Financial Field. Here is the kick by Campbell. Marcus not Thomas. Not very good. No, out of bounds. Well, a while ago we were talking about the bowl eligibility. Army will play SMU in the Armed Forces Bowl in Dallas on campus at SMU. And ironically, maybe we'll play San Diego State in Poinsettia Bowl in San Diego. And Air Force, as you saw, Aflac. is also in the bowl. And uh, that leads us to the AFLAC trivia question. Which service academy has the most all-time bowl wins? got a one in three chance of getting it right. <laughs> we narrow the odds. Steelman through the touchdown. Here's Ricky Dobbs dropping back. Gets a good block, but nobody open. They need. And he is sacked. Mike Gann is in there. I see that. Jarrett Mackey, number 94. So now something positive defensively for Army. Well, that time, the secondary for Army did a nice job of spreading out and finding their guys. Watch them spread out and defend. Had a crossing route open right there, but the pressure up front was too much. Get them inside and make that passing game. That time it was Jarek Mackey that made the play. Loss of six, second down, 16. Dobbs back, rolls out. Fires it deep on one hop, intended for Greg Jones, what? and there is a flag. What? You got to play football. That they're going to pick that flag up, aren't they? I would think uncatchable because it was so short. And how do you know if you're a defender? Right. I think Josh Jackson's saying, "What am I supposed to do?" Personal foul, face pass, oh. 14 on the defense, 15-yard penalty, first down. No pass interference then. Worthy of another look, I would think. Keep an eye on it. Yeah. Oh, yeah? Yep. Guess those yeah, and he knew right away, didn't Guys he? with the striped yeah. shirts are doing a good yeah. job, huh? Oh, <laughs> well, they're closer to it than we are. <laughs> That doesn't stop us from pontificating every once in a while. Yeah, you gotta <laughs> eat some crow on that one. Oh, don't yeah. Don't Ta I? <laughs> <laughs> Tastes good with salt. That was busted play again, and balls oh, loose. Fumble again. again. Holy cow. Josh McNary. I think it was McNary that ripped the ball loose that time. It was. I tell you, Navy prides themselves. No turnovers, precision. Watch McNary just rip it loose. And those guys were practicing yes. that in warm-ups before the game. They had three separate drills that they were working on about an hour before kickoff. Stripping the ball away. Tom Cole. Uh, Josh McNary, who stripped the ball and forced the fumble. Probably a, the best. Matter of fact, this was one of the three drills. This is not what we just saw, but they were doing a series of three different exercises to work on getting the ball away. Yeah, it was two hours before the game. And when you emphasize something, you end up getting what you coach. And that time, McNary just a little too strong for Ricky Dabbs. Three turnovers for Navy now. All fumbles. Steelman 
In a quarterback. That, that looked bad also, didn't well, it? Did it ever. They have just bottled up passing. You got to give credit, great credit to this Navy defense. They understand the triple option. They read it quick. They're very active up front. They get off blocks. That's Chase Burge, number 93, right over Zach Peterson, the center. Well, that looked ugly. It was intended for Hassan. But Jerry Hallberger, number 31, was there. That's exactly who it was, coming right off the edge that time. This is such a key drive. You can see that Buddy Green has dialed up his defenses, ran right through a block that time to make the play. Didn't have enough time to get rid of it. Third and 10, 6.45 to go. You can see with the graphic that Army has only attempted four passes. They've run it. 18 times. That's roughly proportionate. Yep, that one's going to be and five yards back. Be, yep, five yards. Army has not overcome all season a 10 point deficit to win. They did come back against Hawaii where they were down 14 to tie it, but Hawaii ended up winning the football game. So this is a lot to overcome for this Army offense. Steelman will run it, gets a block, a good one. And he's going to dive, he'll be up just short. And Wyatt Middleton, the safety, was the last guy that had a chance to save the play. Key part of the football game for Army. Remember, they get the ball to start the second half. Well, do you think about going for oh, it? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right. And they will. No hesitation at all. There's. Wyatt Middleton, probably the best uh, of the defenders for Navy. Navy has to be thinking Steelman on here. Let's see if Army changes it up and doesn't run the quarterback. Fourth and one. Sweep left. I think he got it. Change up. Brian Cobbs, number 32, on the handoff and the sweep. First down. Well, you knew that Navy was thinking quarterback. What do they do? Fly sweep one way. You got the fullback and the quarterback that gets around there. One guy makes the tackle, Harburger again, but not in time. Key block there from the left tackle, Anise Mercy, number 73. Mercy was telling us at West Point on Wednesday about his uh, father immigrating from Lebanon because of the Civil War there in the 70s. And uh, here's the toss right side, Patrick Neely. That's just short of the first down. Watch Brian Cobbs, number 32. You throw for the outside leg. I think it's right here at the slot back. Watch him go to the outside on the option and throw. It's going to, I think, just be just outside of the frame. But you can see the block right there as he just throws for the outside leg of the safety and makes it. The slot backs must throw for those safeties to make the triple option work. Second and one. The pitch. There it is again. That's it. Patrick Mealy that time, number five. One of the keys to this game, precision. You know what I put number two, Vern, as key to the game? Who can cut block the best? Right. Watch this guy right here. Watch Mealy cut block, throw for the outside, take their leg out. Outside knee, positive play. And different from a chop block. Oh, no, no, chop block's way inside. You're right, yep. good point. First down 10, Army trailing by 10. They'll test the middle, Jared Hassan. Well, we talked about, uh, there's so many stories among the starting, uh, with the, the squads. Here's Anise Mercy. We had a chance to chat with him. He's from Oceanside, California. His father immigrated from Lebanon with two cousins, came across to Los Angeles, worked as a painter, 
and is now the owner of his own company. And his son, son of Lebanese immigrants, is going to serve his country for five years, at least as a field artillery officer. Steelman. Right side. All right. Dissect. Sure. Mercy, if you're going to be a tackle in this offense, you must be quick. Number 73. This time, we got him on a pass blocking scheme. Rolling out away from him. Doesn't have to do too much. But the guards are the guys that have to be physical. The tackles must have the quickness to cut off the linebackers. Third down, four, 17 7, 307 to go, first half. Pitch, Mealy gets a block in the corner and struggles for the first down. He had a really nice block to lead the way from Malcolm Brown, number 23. Watch the quick hands this time of Trent Steelman. He has to fake to the fullback and pitch it almost simultaneously. Watch this. He gets a crashing in quickly, boom, out to the outside. Once you get to the outside, you get a block that you need from Malcolm Brown and make a first down. That's, excuse me, that's the quick hands of an experienced guy that's in the second year of this offense. On first down, they'll come to the right side. Steelman keeps. He's down to the seven. In the triple option offense, here's the way you do it. You think, give it to the fullback unless they take it away. This time it's just a straight option. No fullback fake. Actually, the pitch man that time was Jared Hassan. But Steelman, who ran the ball last year for just 16 yards, already has 41 in the first half. And this, the 11th play of the drive on second down and two. Right side, down to the three. Jabari Tune that time was crashing to take the fullback. Steelman saw number 98 coming down full bore, and he faked it to him for another successful play. First down goal. Doesn't matter how good you are, Vern, right? You turn the ball over three times, anybody can beat you. There you are. David Brooks goes wide to the left. And the unlikely possibility they throw it to him. Steelman. Stole it from it's him. It's Yep. And maybe he has it. It's Wyatt Middleton, number eight. He's got blockers. He's got a convoy. And Wyatt Middleton strolls in. No flags. Touchdown, Navy. My goodness. It is rolled a 97-yard fumble return. Joe Buckley. I think it was Jerry Harburger, number 31, that stripped it. Let's see if it was. I think it was, and then Middleton gets the Fumble up in the air. One more look. I think it was a little bit of Harburger, and then Middleton gets the loose ball. Wyatt Middleton, senior engineering student, 97 yard touchdown. Trent Steelman, the uh, sophomore quarterback. About to take his in, team in uh, to climb within three and instead winds up with the longest fumble return in Navy history. That's two histories today. Pass yes. and a fumble. Joe Buckley with the extra point. Nope. All start. Sometimes Five -yard penalty. poor ball handling can get you out of sync and also cause bad things. I wonder if Steelman had a good grip of the ball. We'll show you. 
Extra point now from five yards. Further back. It's good. One more look, just to show you when things go wrong, just a little bit what can happen. Watch Steelman bump into the fullback and the ball get bobbled early. Watch this. He bumps into Haas and see the ball get a little loose. Steelman re-grabs it. Tyler Simmons, number 54, reaches his hand in there. But I really think it was Harburger that got it. Number 31 on the end of the line. Fights off a block and then sticks his hand out. Steelman almost catches it. And a disaster for Army. And it has now been officially changed to a 98-yard fumble return. And Wyatt Middleton. That's a tough one. That's a tough one to live with. Think about that 17 14 and the ball to kick off in the second half. And then you look up, turn around, and number eight is receding into the distance with the ball in his hands. Squib kick. Near side. This is Raymond Maples, number one. But now less than a minute to go. Thanks to the MetLife blimp for aerial coverage of today's game. Happy holidays to your family from the company that protects more families than any other. Wyatt Middleton, longest fumble return for a touchdown in Navy history. His brother William plays for the Jacksonville Jaguars, fifth round draft pick. Early in his career, Wyatt Middleton, you would say, might be the strength of the Navy defense. And he is going to, well, dropped. That's Brooks, number 13. Well, before we go any further, let's solve the mystery. The Aflac trivia question of the week, which service academy has the most all-time bowl wins? Air Force, nine. And here is uh, what they have each of them done Air Force 9 10 and 1 Navy 7 8 and 1 and uh, you made a good point because Army with a 2 and 2 record yeah they were they were good in the days when no, nobody had bowls right now everybody goes to a bowl have a nice uniform they put you in a bowl I noticed that <laughs> 35 of them oh quarterback draw Steelman very nice play yes. very nice play design you don't see the very creative play right here off of a rollout Watch it. Goes upfield, then they let him go. It's quarterback draw. Frank Allen, number 79, was out there on Warwick to uh, give Army about seven extra yards. And now the chain is reset. The clock at 31 seconds. Steelman. Nobody open. Get rid of it. Yes, he does. 24 seconds we, to go. We met with Trent uh, when we were at West Point, and I have to say and be honest, the first year I met him, I think Trent was still trying to figure out what Trent wanted in life. He was the quarterback and he had to lead a team as a freshman. That's pretty tough to do around right. here with all these leaders. But when he walked into our room this year, he was a different man. He enjoys who he is and he believes in what he's doing. Yeah, he, he accepted the offer to attend West Point because he wanted to play Division I football. It wasn't about the military or the life. And uh, Gary, I, you complimented him on his growth, uh, his demeanor, and he said, I'm all in. I believe in the mission of West Point. 17 seconds to go. Army has used its last timeout. 17 seconds to go here and coming up at the half. We'll go back to New York for the Geico halftime report. Aaron Taylor has joined Spencer Tillman and Tim Brando. And of course, the four Heisman finalists are in the studio. Steelman caught and dropped back at the 41. So that will come to an end, uh, bring to an end the limited opportunity that uh, Army had here toward the end of the half. And Steelman. 
shaken as he uh, gets up after the tackle. Army was about to go in to cut the deficit to three. It was 17-7 at the time. And Wyatt Middleton picked off a fumble caused by Jerry Hallberger and returned it 98 yards for the longest fumble return for a touchdown in the history of the Naval Academy. Let's go down to Trace, who's with Army coach Rich Ellerson. Coach, we just saw Trent Steelman get a little shaken up there. Are you aware of that at all? Oh, he's he's always a little shaken up. He's, he'll be okay. He'll be okay. That devastating fumble right on that last offensive drive before this past one. Can you just tell about tell us about how you'll approach that turn of events with well, your team in the yeah, locker room? Uh, the scoreboard's a lie. We just got to keep playing. You just never know how this thing's going to go. That's obviously can be devastating, but these guys are resilient. We'll be okay. Good luck. Thanks a lot, Vern. Thank you, Tracy. You no, know, Trent Steelman limps as he goes in, despite the assurance of his head coach that everything's going to be just fine. That's the end of the first half with the score 24 7. Let's go to Tim Brando. Army, hey, one game, one Do shot. It for the corner. Do it for my dad. It's time to get it done. Beat me. Beat our Navy, you will see. Beat Navy, Navy. Army. Underway from Philadelphia. Releases deep downfield for John Howell. Makes the catch at the 35, peeling away. The drought is over. Stole it from it's him. Stolen. Yep. The Navy has it. Because I felt that was my purpose in life to help others. And we welcome you back to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, the 111th playing of Army Navy. And a moment ago, Tracy with Ken Neil Matalolo. Coach, you're up 24 7, but very uncharacteristic. Three fumbles. How did you approach it with Ricky Dobbs in the locker room? Well, he knows. You know, that's been our number one emphasis for these three weeks take care of the football. And obviously, we haven't done a good job with that. But, you know, I don't want to pressure the kid. He knows what time it is. He's also made some great plays. Hopefully, he can take care of the ball better in the second half. We have to ask you about the lay around your neck. Can you tell us the significance of it? Well, somebody from White gave me it's a tea leave and uh, brings great luck to us, and uh, I'm definitely going to wear it. We wish you the best today. Thanks a lot. All right, thank you, Tracy. We get set for the start of the second half with Tracy Byrne and Gary here from Lincoln Financial Field. Sixth time, seventh time these two teams have played in this uh, facility, and Navy has won all six. Army will get the ball. Teague will kick off. Josh Jackson is back to return it for. Army. A lot of air out of this thing, isn't it? Can you imagine yeah. if it was 17 14? And that's what it looked like it was going to be until the big play defensively, the 98 yard fumble return with a minute and a half to go. Here's the return near side, and Army will uh, have a little skirmish and then put it in play. Uh, we talk about big plays all the time, but that one, that yeah. wide middle to the fumble return. Especially when you've gone, you know, so long without winning, so hard to score. 24-7. Now, that's a number that's familiar to college football fans. Boise State up at half, 24-7 right. to seven in Nevada. Alabama up, 24-7 to seven over Auburn. Problem is, Colin Kaepernick and Cam Newton are not on the field. The two guys that were quarterbacks and playmakers. It's a different type of challenge for the Army team. They have to do it like their coach said. Don't look at the scoreboard. It lies to you. It tells you you have to play a different game. Army must continue to do what they do, that Army does, slowly chip away. Maples with the first carry. And he got seven. And a player is down for the Naval Academy. Have to keep a real close eye on Trent Steelman also. Right at the end of the half, he was limping very badly. And to me, watching him out there, he does not appear that he has a full 100% gait. Well, at the end of the half, here's what happened to uh, Trent Steelman. Yeah, from behind, 
Was it Tune that got him? Yes, lands on his ankle. That's exactly how I broke my ankle, Mer, in my injury that ended my career. From behind like that, he got up, and as he was, I was watching it very closely. He was coming off. Teams, the Army, were actually Navy, both going into the locker room. One guy went out there and put his arm around him. Number 50, Stephen Anderson. That was Jabari Tuani who uh, made the tackle on Steelman, and here's Kevin Edwards going off the field. Here's a quick pitch, and they come right. It's Maples again. And for an update on Trent Steelman, let's uh, go down to Tracy. Well, guys, I spoke to Rich Ellerson as he came back on the field after half. He said that Steelman has a sprained foot. He is cleared to play. Obviously, they just have to see how he feels out there and how effective he can be, guys. All right, Trace, thank you. I think as Navy watches him more and more, they're going to stop forcing him to pitch and force him to run a little bit. And off Maples left. Maples has been a worker force here uh, for Army in this ballgame. And uh, Gary, how about halftime trims? Well, when you got a quarterback that hits the deep ones, remember St St Trent Steelman had an opportunity, but it was Dobbs who made the two key passes in this football game. Trent had his team down there twice. Once he got a touchdown, second time the turnover. Two scoring plays, big scoring plays, one by the defense, one by the offense. And on characteristic of both teams, a lack of precision in this game. Second down, eight. Steelman will throw, perhaps. Yes. Got it. Yeah. That's Hassan, the fullback. And that's good for a first down at the 42-yard line. <laughs> Hassan was blocking for a second. Ball's fake to him, carries out his play, and then he goes, well, I have to hit the linebacker. I didn't get tackled. I might as well put my hands up and see if he can find me. And he did. First down, 10. Hassan. Yeah, that's the Hassan that Army felt they needed and could depend on. And when you talk to the Navy coaches, especially Buddy Green, the defensive coordinator, he said they've got a weapon that they didn't have before. And that time, it was misread by the linebackers for Navy. Tyler Simmons, you got to read it properly. That was a base block, and he ran to the outside. He scraped too fast, and he ran right at him. Passing again with a quick opener. Oh, and gonna... a flag, it's going to come back. Yep. Flag at the 31-yard line. There's two ways to block Holding, this option. 57 offense, 10-yard penalty, first down. Zach Peterson, the center, was who was called on it. Let's see what happens. Right in the middle. Oh, I didn't see that at all. Mm. No, I didn't. In fact, if you talk to both offensive coaches, they both complain about the other nose tackle grabbing the center and not allowing either the guard or the center to get to the linebackers. That makes it a first down 20. Here's the toss. Maples out of a tackle and gets one of those cross blocks. Boy, that was a dandy out in the open. Malcolm Brown, number 23, with a picture perfect block you want to see some discipline watch david brooks the wide receiver get his block to the outside on the perimeter and then be careful not to get called into too much ball's coming out he gets the safety bumps him and then puts his hands up just in time to make sure that he doesn't get tempted or the referee doesn't get tempted to throw the flag well that makes him the second down and eight uh -oh. pile in the middle of the 30-yard line Passing the carrier again. I tell you, you put on the tape. Now think about what this Navy defense did against some good offenses. I mean, what they did to Notre Dame, what they did to Maryland, very explosive offense. They are very active up front. They play that 5-2 defense in the middle of that defense. Burge, the two defensive ends, they are crashing at all different angles. Third and eight, four-man front here. Steelman will tuck it. He's got a lot of space as he goes left. He's caught by Warwick, but he does pick up the first down. And this was an improvisation this time. This was not a called play. 
He improvised this one, roll out one way. It was not the quarterback draw. This was a pass. He didn't like it, came back the other way. He, I don't believe he's 100%, but he ain't coming off the field. No. The one thing they said about Trent, he might not be the fastest, he might not be the quickest reader, he might not be the best passer, but he's the toughest quarterback we've ever had. Yep, every teammate brought that up. First down, they overcome a first and 20. Here's the pitch, Mealy. And he lost maybe three back to the 20-yard line. Kevin Edwards, number 15, who... Uh, hmm. We talked about that front. They've gone to a four-man look here. Actually, it still is that three-man look to the outside. Forced the pitch by Harburger and to the outside. You called it exactly right. Kevin Edwards played through the block that time and allowed no space. Second down, 12. What do you got? What do you got, uh, Ian Shields? Can you come up with a play here? Steelman under pressure. Caught and dropped all the way back at the 30. Well, I tell you, Harburger's having a football game, isn't he? It was a wheel route to the outside, and it was guarded real well this time. Going to get a wheel to the outside. No place to throw. Harburger forces it and then cleaned up by Billy Yarborough. Billy Yarborough's sixth sack. He's in his first year as a starter for the Naval Academy. And how about what Billy Yarborough told us? Oh. I said, you got an appointment to the Naval Academy. He said, I wanted to be a Marine my whole life. And I said, Billy, if you had not gotten an appointment, what would you have done after high school? He said, I would have joined the Marines. Yep. Has an older brother who enlisted in the Marine Corps, lost his dad last, uh, his father, William, last August. Play a game. Billy Arbor we're talking about. Well, the Army, Army took a timeout. Yep. Billy Arbro, who is going to serve in the Marine Corps. I'm Billy Arbro from Blythewood, South Carolina. The service selection was Marine Ground, and I came to Navy to be part of the Brotherhood. Go Navy, beat Army. Chevrolet is proud to be the official vehicle of the Army-Navy game. The Achilles Freedom Team of Wounded Veterans is joined by Jenna Griffith, director of Achilles Freedom Team. Chevrolet, proud participating sponsor of today's Army-Navy game, along with GM, CEO, and U.S. Naval Academy graduate, Mr. Dan Ackerson. Chevrolet is donating this new 2011 Chevrolet Silverado heavy-duty truck, which earlier today was awarded the Motor Trend Truck of the Year Award by Motor Trend Editor-in-Chief Angus McKenzie to the Achilles Freedom Team organization. Chevrolet is proud to partner with Achilles International to support their mission. Navy leads at 24-7. This is the opening drive of the third quarter. It is the 11th play of the drive. Third down, 22, Army. Right side. Malcolm Brown wrapped up, knocked out of bounds. Yeah, it'll be about a 45 or six yard field goal from here. I wanted to go back for a second, Vern, when we visited with Billy Yarbrough, and I asked Billy, and, and sometimes I feel insecure around these guys, I have to admit, are you willing, you're, you know you're going to risk your life. Right. And he said, you know why I do it? Because I know I can do it, and some people can't, and it's my duty. Amazing. Alex Carlton. Oh, he hooked it. And good. My goodness. Long was 49 for the year. A little seven yard, seven iron draw. <laughs> and you know what? Putting points on the board in the opening drive at least lets Navy know now it's a two position game. And as Vern said, getting ready for golf season, he hooks it right in there on the 16th green for you, Vern. You got a downhill putt from four feet. Wow. Monday only, CBS. You know the premise of this thing? It's one of these guys, these, you know, military guys, goes back to Hawaii and works for the governor to clean it up. You know how good this is? 
We TiVo it. It's that good. Oh, really? Yeah, it's one of our 37 shows we TiVo each week. Well, you and Christy are working for the promo <laughs> award of the year. Yeah. Was it a Navy? Of Steve, yeah. Steve yeah. Garrett. Great show. Jack Lauren. And of course, Neil Matalolo and uh, Richard. Uh oh, Ellerson. they're going to fake the reverse. Yeah, they did. And here we go, Thomas. Out to the 33 yard line. These uh, two coaches, both with uh, backgrounds in Hawaii. And now, Red Lobster presents today's scholar athlete, John Dowd, 3.92 grade point average, major in mechanical engineering and a first team academic All America. And Jordan Trimble for the Army, grade point average of 3.77 major in systems engineering. And he'll go to the Signal Corps branch, Red Lobster. Presenting a thousand dollars to each school's general scholarship. Handoff goes to Teach, number 39. Jared Mackey, number 94, makes the stop. Well, these uh, they go back many, many years. Both served on the staff of the 1990 team. Rich Ellerson, front row. Ken Neomatololo in the back. He was recruited by Ellerson as a quarterback. And of course, Paul Johnson, who is now the coach at Georgia Tech, is also a part of that staff. Dobbs toss right side. GG Green, number 21. Yeah, see, from that step back and almost double eagle look, Josh McNary, kind of got his the 3 4 look that he's using. McNary has a little more time to read the play. See him right here, it's kind of a 3-3. Three, three. He reads it, and then down the line, there's no cutback now. Safety's in the alley running it. McNary doesn't give it any room. Donovan Travis is able to make the, make the play. Good defense. And a big stop opportunity now for Army. Third down eight. You hear a little uh, noise coming from the Corps of Cadets to the left. Dobbs pulls the trigger, has a man open. Greg Jones out of San Antonio. That's the weapon that Army doesn't have yet. Not enough confidence to cover Jones. Too much space down here. Watch. Big cushion when you get beat for a long touchdown. As a defense, not necessarily yourself, but as a defense when you get beat for a long one, become a little wary and allow those easy throws to the outside. Jones, a senior, goes wide right first catch of the day. Here's the toss near side. GG Green. Well, we had a chance to chat with Greg Jones down at Annapolis on Thursday. And Gary asked Greg, a senior he played at Reagan High School, did you ever compete against anybody famous? Right. And he thought for 10 seconds or so, he said, well, you know what? I used to play football and basketball against Jeremiah Rivers, whose father, Doc, was winding up his NBA career. And things turned out okay for Doc. Yep. He's coach of the Celtics, was here in town. And Jeremiah started his basketball career at Georgetown. He now is a starter for Indiana and Tom Cree. Second down. Toss Green. There he is again. Yeah, third down. Donovan Travis, the safety. You can tell the rules. The Army knows what they're doing against the against this triple option. They got to practice against each other. They've got their rules down, their assignments down. The rule buster has been the pass play. Watch him run the alley. Keep a guy in the middle. Take away the assignment of the pitch to the outside. Erzinger turns it in. You depend on the other guy to be there. That's the discipline. You run out for the block because you know your safety is going to make the play inside. Third and four. I think that was big number 50 on that one, wasn't it? With Marcus Hilton's help, number 96. Steven Anderson, who what's in a oh, quick, quick snap here on fourth on down. Fourth down. Will they fake it and try to draw him off sides? They did. Oh, no. Another mistake by Army. Ouch. 
Ouch, 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 if you're an Army fan. Offside, 93 defense, five-yard penalty, first down. Now, Mike rem Gann. Remember, it was at New Orleans, New Orleans uh, had that play to win against Cincinnati on one of those plays, end of the game. That's exactly what happened right there. I don't believe that Navy was going to snap that ball. And after the penalty against Mike Gann, first down, you saw... Brady the Mill celebrate with Ricky Dobbs. Teach up the middle. That fullback position, you got to be a man to be fullback in this offense. Ricky Dobbs, the quarterback, started out at prep school as the fullback. He said, that's the tough position. Yeah. Ricky said that was not his idea. He almost, he tried to transfer. Uh, Paul Johnson recruited Ricky Dobbs here and then Paul Johnson took the job at Georgia Tech, and Ricky said he called Coach Johnson to tell him he wanted to follow him, and Coach Johnson never returned the phone call. That's probably the smartest phone call that Ricky Dobbs never got returned. Yeah. Great. Deep left side, good coverage. Intercepted. Picked off by Richard King, number two. Great technique by King. He never let Greg Jones get behind him on the play. Second and short. Almost could smell Navy trying to go for it. There's Jones right there. Watch Richard King come up on to the outside, jams him, and then beats him to the spot. Jones never got past. And you would hope that Jones could save an interception, but he couldn't do it. A wonderful catch. Twas indeed. And Army celebrates. The Home Depot College Football on CBS Sports. The Army-Navy game presented by USAA is sponsored by Bud Light. Taco Bell. America's Navy. And by K Jewelers. And our thanks to the MetLife Blimp for today's aerial coverage. Nobody protects more American families than MetLife. Aside, of course, from the men and women of the U.S. Armed Forces. 24-10, fourth turnover by Navy in this ball game. And moments ago, on the sidelines, this is Teach, the fullback, with Ricky Dobbs and uh, trying to encourage his teammates. What, and what did all of the players that we met say about Ricky Dobbs? He plays quarterback, but he doesn't like to be a rah-rah guy. That's right. Here's Hassan. All right, all right, all right. Out to the 26, Jared Hassan, the sophomore out of Delafield, Wisconsin. See, since the first quarter, the Army defense has made a statement. And look at the offense since the first quarter. Hassan, there it is. It's a tackle. And that's another Army first down. Wyatt Middleton, number eight, <laughs> makes the tackle. I had to laugh. We were talking to the people, Ian Shields, the offensive coordinator, as we watch Hassan take the ball. He said, we knew we had a great one in Jared Hassan because our defensive players said, the guy on the scout team fullback is killing us, coach. You're going to love him. That's right. Well, he's got such great weight for that position, 6'3", 235. Tough. He gets the toss here, looks for a block. Malcolm Brown tries to get out in front, but uh, Tyler Simmons well, we talk a lot about the guys that got the balls, but the ball up in football, but it's the guys up front and those slot backs, those wide receivers that go and throw at your legs. It's a technique in this triple option that you have to have running backs, fullbacks, wide receivers, not just the offensive line that block. Jacob Bone is in now, number 34. At the fullback spot, they hand it off to Maples. He comes left, and he's close for another first down. 
Well, they had such an opportunity to cut this uh, ball game to a three point deficit just before the half. And if you just joined us, Rich Ellerson had to watch as Trent Steelman fumbled at the two yard line, returned 98 yards by Wyatt Middleton. And uh, Army, to their credit, fought back, got a field goal. And now they've got an interception, and uh, though trailing by 14, they're putting themselves away. Oh, big hit. Uh -oh. I think that was Wyatt Middleton. They say he's our hitter. What a slow crossing route. And Middleton, the safety, reads it all the way. He knew it was going there, and he timed it perfectly. Second down and ten. Go. Maples left across the 50. It'll be a big third down now. Third and three or four, depending on the spot. Aaron McCauley makes the tackle here. You're just watching this Army team this year compared to what they could do last year mm -hmm. against the Navy division. It's just night and day. They're much improved. Rich Ellerson deserves a lot of credit and his staff for the growth of this team. On third and four. Not well, Hassan. Oh, uh, he would have been better off falling down, but how do you tell a kid to stop trying? Yeah. Right? I thought he was actually going to run the wrong way, like Jim Marshall. You know what I'm saying? Because he got spun around. And he's running, running, running. He gets spun around, and I just thought he was going to accelerate right there for the wrong end zone for a second. Loss of eight. And that is the end of the third quarter. A little encouragement from Rich Ellerson. Yeah, I think he said, I'll take that. Yeah, you, you bet. Just keep playing hard. End of three with a score, 24-10, Navy. We'll return to Philadelphia right after this word from your local station. Got an unidentified airborne contact inbound. Ghost Rider 1 1, inbound air contact. Do you have visual ID? I've got something on my scope. It's heading for the ship fast. Look out! The Abraham Lincoln Strike Group at sea. Go Navy! For the 111th time, it's Army versus Navy. When I think of democracy, I think about the people. My son wants to make a difference. He wanted to be part of the solution. It's cool to have a dad that can make this kind of a commitment. And I wouldn't change a thing. We welcome you back to Philadelphia in the beginning of the fourth quarter. This 111th Army-Navy game, Vern Lundquist, Gary Danielson, Tracy Wolfson, our entire crew, so privileged to be with you and to present this meeting between the Army and the Navy. It's fourth down. Jonathan Bowles is back. And they will let this one bounce. A little hop, step, and jump. That's a 42-yard punt. He's gotten... Half his yardage on the yeah, holes. Right. Been effective, though. Yes. 24 10. Army has the ball. Well, the long gray line hoping something positive about to occur defensively now because uh, Navy's got the ball back. We've still got a ball game. Why? We, we do. Well, the last three drives that Navy's had the ball, Vern, have all been turnovers. Now, they got a break on one of them when they returned the turnover on the one-yard line all the way for a touchdown. But when you're a Navy team and only have 33 plays so far in this football game, you know that offense is not working according to plan. Here's the first down effort, and it's Teach, number 39, the junior fullback 
And I think that's what Alexander Teach was telling their team is we've tricked them a few times, but we haven't blocked them. The Army defense has been making a stand, and it's been kind of the out of offense plays, the throws, the long return of the fumble that have really been the difference of the game. Matt Aiken goes wide to the left side on second down. The need is eight. Dobbs keeps it. This is only his 11th rush of the ball game. Steven Anderson with another tackle, number 50. Well, here is uh, without doubt the key play of the game. Steelman going in and at the two yard line. Wyatt Middleton picked it off and went untouched 98 yards to the north. And that turned a 17, potentially a 17 14 game into a 24 7 halftime. Well, here, here's another key play in this game. Third, about six or seven yards, third and six. Can Army get the ball back? Dobbs fires. Great throw. Yep. Caught by Greg Jones, and that's good for the first down. You know, Greg Jones reminds me, Vern, when I saw him, of all the guys that I grew up with. Hmm. You know, we'd go, we'd both go play street hockey, we'd go, and he said, you know what he loved doing? Playing home run derby. Yeah. He just one of those gym rats. He was a high school quarterback, now a wide receiver. He just probably was good at everything. Played all three of the majors, basketball, football, and baseball. Flag down. It's a substitution question here. Let's see if they get this straightened out. There is no penalty for illegal substitution. Well, I guess they uh, got it straightened out. Let's take you back to East Rutherford, New Jersey. Dobbs, fine coach. Yeah, catch. that was great. That said, kind of athletic ability that you really don't teach a guy. That's growing up, going down to the ballpark, playing pitch and catch with your buddies every day that you can make one like that. Here's Teach. I'm just thinking again about our conversation. It takes such a commitment for these yeah. young men and women. It really does. And we asked Greg Jones if he ever had to talk anybody out of leaving, and he laughed. <laughs> he and did. he said, me? Yeah. He said, I was out the door at, my, at the end of my sophomore year, and one of the more fortunate things in my life was that my teammates talked me into coming back and recommitting, and now he's going to go into uh, surface warfare. He'll serve on the ship. Second down. Dobbs has it. It's going to be third down again. Steven Anderson, who's had more than a handful of tackles today. Anderson's so emotional and talked about uh, the demands of West Point in developing teamwork, unity, leadership. He's quite a young man. Eight tackles, half a sack. Third and three. Army has turned it over, or maybe rather, four times today. Dobbs, first down. Well, we talked about Steven Anderson all game. Did not play in this football game as a two-time captain of the West Point Cadets here. Watch him take it on, take it on. Kind of Olay's one block, takes on the next, and then takes on the tackle. Fern, I want to tell a little story. I went down to kind of watch the parading early, and I'm walking up, and some guy says, go Boilers. I turned around. There was an older gentleman, 75, 78 years old, sitting there with his wife. And I go, what are you doing here? And he says, you know, I love football. And one of the things I promised myself before I died, I wanted to see an Army-Navy game live. Wow. Here's Teach around the left side. And, and of course, I, I encourage anybody that has an opportunity to come here and watch this game in person. It's something special. Yep. Get here early. 
That's right. Not quite as early as we do, but get it early. <laughs> it's inside. It's inside. Yeah, it is inside. inside. Are you suggesting that? We left at 9.30 for a 2.30 game. All right, never mind. I'll get left out of here. So you're suggesting five hours before the game is a little early. <laughs> a little early. I just told you there was going to be a traffic problem. <laughs> and there wasn't. But you got to see the march on. March on. We saw them line the field. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> on second down, that's Dobbs again. You know, you want to say Dobbs doesn't have a lot of carries, but it kind of in a way he does. I mean, you know, he, he, when you only have the number of plays that Navy has, I think what they went back to the bench and said, Let's see if we can just run our triple option offense and block these guys. Teach was given his offensive lineman an ear pull. I think they told Dobbs, run the offense. We're going to make some first downs. Third down and one. Anderson. Yeah. Now yeah. That, that, that might be in, uh, inducing. Anderson, yes, yeah. in, in the neutral zone. They're going to go five against Army on this one. At least that's what the Navy people think. Yes. Neutral zone infraction, defense, five-yard penalty, first down. See, it was going to be a blitz inside. No, Anderson is going to hit the gap, the A-gap right there, and then a reaction up front. Josh Cabral, number 65, reacting. Smart offensive lineman. Yep. Results in the first down. First and ten. Dobbs. And yeah, they got that quarterback keep. Just going right behind Teach. He fakes and follows. Remember, Dobbs is strong and he can. Run right behind the block that time. Just keep it and just keep going. Breaks a lot of tackles. Very strong running quarterback. You know what happens when you go three straight drives where you turn the ball over three straight times? They, they make you run the first play of the offense, and that's what they're doing, running the first play that they put in. This is Richard King, who appears to have been injured on the last play. King, who had that third uh, quarter interception in the ball game. So he heads to the sidelines. We were, yeah. talk we were talking to Ricky Dobbs about how he's graded when he runs the triple option. And he says, any minus, any misread is a minus. And no matter how well you do on everything else, if there's one misread, the best you can score is a 99. You can't, like, have a 75 yard touchdown pass count two pluses and a race of minus once you have it you have it they want the goal is about 90 percent now ricky usually doesn't grade out that high but they live with them because of all the other things he brings at the quarterback position the arm the tackle breaking and those different skills it is a first down Bob still has it he did tell us uh I think Gary asked him, give me a highlight in your career here, which is about to wind down. They do have the bowl game, of course. And he said, probably Notre Dame last year. They, this is a group of seniors now that will have defeated or has defeated Notre Dame three times. He graded 98 in that Notre Dame victory. And he said, close behind, though, is Notre Dame this year because I ran the offense well enough to hand the ball off to Teach for 200 yards. Two passing touchdowns, one of them 77 yards. And they'll pound the middle again. They're also working on the clock here. Stay tuned after the game for the Jeep post game show on CBS Sports. Tim Spencer, Aaron Taylor, enjoyed the conversation with the Heisman candidates. That uh, winner will be announced this evening in New York City. Uh -huh. Steven Anderson again. Going to be again. The other yeah. one. Both guards are smart. John Dowd, of course, we already previewed him as being smart. 
reacts to Anderson again. Yeah. Anderson is wired for this Virtual football game. For action. Defense, five yard penalty, first down. This time it's over the right guard. Anderson's not going to settle down until around Tuesday, I think, for this football game. You're right. You know, there's a funny thing talking about the streak. Billy Yarbrough told us, I can kind of understand it from both sides. You know, we went so long here in the Navy before we beat Notre Dame, I can kind of feel how Army feels with this streak. He said, on the other hand, I can kind of understand Notre Dame. I don't want to be the guy that ends the streak against Army. Here's Dobbs left side again. And uh, Jared Mackey, number 94, wraps this one up. Now 6.25 to go in the ball game. This has been uh, ball control at its best by the Navy offense. Ricky Dobbs, Douglasville, Georgia. Yep, 12 plays on this drive so far. 11 runs and one pass. You see it. Second down, eight. Holding on the play though. Flag at the 17. Personal foul. Face mask number 96 defense. Wow. That was about as well run. My fault. I thought they had holding on the outside on the slot. I didn't even see anybody touch the runner. Let's look at the blocking up front. Didn't see anything up there. It's gashed inside. Way at the left side of the screen it might have been. But John Dowd, the right guard, had a great throw block on the play. So much. I'd like to see it one more time just to circle it and give Dowd an attaboy on that one. What a well blocked. First, the extra point. It really was a wonderful block by Dow. Yep. I actually thought it was going to be called on Dow that he might have grabbed him with his arm. Watch him pull, reach block to the outside. Now watch him throw. Puts his leg up and just knocks down and into the end zone. A well-run play. 13 plays, 87 yards, and it chewed up nine minutes and three seconds. And now it's time for our Geico game recap. Well, let's take you through the scoring in this 111th Army Navy game. Buckley with a 36 yard field goal. Navy got on the board first. And then Ricky Dobbs with a 77 yard touchdown pass. Howell caught it. And that put Navy up 10-0 after the extra point. Dobbs with a 32-yard pass. And 17-0. Then Steelman got the pass that ended a nearly four-game drought. Touchdown scored by Army against Navy. And here's the play of the game. Wyatt Middleton, as Steelman was about to go in to score. He bobbled the ball. Middleton picked it off. And you can see he had... Uh, White jersey escort all the way to the end zone, 98 yards. Army tried to make a game of it in the third quarter. They got this field goal from Alex Carlton, 42 yards out. But then just moments ago, G.G. Green with a 25-yard run, extra point good, 31 to 10. And we'd like to thank MetLife for aerial coverage of today's Army-Navy game. And MetLife would like to thank the brave men and women of America's armed forces. And Vern, as you, was going, you were going through that, I, I think that probably is the difference in the two programs right now. Army is building their program. It's on solid foundation, obviously. They're going to a bowl game. But Navy has big playability. A little more speed on the edges. GG Green right there, number 21. Army's longest play of the day. 20 yards by Trent Steelman on a scramble. They do not have that big playability yet. 
kickoff forthcoming with 544 to go. Wow. Yeah, there was a penalty and they moved it up on ah. the kickoff. Yes. <laughs> I was uh, concentrating on the Geico scoring recap. I don't blame you. <laughs> Certain things you do not want to mess up. That's one of them. It's a tale of two benches in this one. We'll be right back. We welcome you back. 31-10 Navy. Army has the football with 5.44 to go. And the stands starting to empty here at Lincoln Financial Field. Steelman will throw. That's caught by David Brooks, number 13. And let's uh, go down to Tracy Wolfson. Trace. Well, guys, at midfield for the coin toss, six Medal of Honor recipients. For Navy, Thomas Hudner, the oldest living Medal of Honor recipient, and he received it for his actions in the Korean War. And for Army, you have Staff Sergeant Sal Junta, the youngest living Medal Award winner, uh, Honor recipient, received last month for saving members of his squad in Afghanistan, guys. All right, Tracy, thank you. Here's Steelman. That one's caught. Well, last night we went to the, uh, uh, it was a joint Navy Army thing at the Union mm -hmm. League here, and uh, several of us were mm -hmm. privileged to meet General Ray Odierno, and I will continue this story after this quick snap. <laughs> America waits. There's the handoff and the pitch, rather. And he was just, uh, he could not have been more accommodating, Gary, and, and he was talking about what it means, and of course he served with such distinction in, in uh, Afghanistan, Iraq, about what it means to the troops there to stay up late at night and watch college football and the NFL. Uh, it gives them something, some surcease from the effort, uh, the loneliness, the danger, and it gives them something to look forward to. There's an eight hour time difference and uh, our men and women over there stay up until the wee hours of the morning to uh, enjoy a little touch of America. Now the injured player now is one of the stars of this game, Wyatt Middleton, number eight. So while they take care of him, we'll step aside. 434 remaining in this one, 31-10. Navy leads it. Army and Navy meeting for the 111th time, and we celebrate this great game with a look back at heroes of the Army-Navy rivalry presented by USAA. It was only three years after 9-11 that Anthony committed to the Naval Academy. When he originally said Navy, we were like, no way. But in hindsight, it's the best thing that ever happened to him. We're very proud of him. It really doesn't hit you until close to graduation what your commitment and expectation to your country is. So, you know, we knew he would have to do five years afterwards. And having just deployed on November 7th, I was an emotional wreck. But he said he's in charge of the biggest gun on the ship, so he's not worried. It's important for America to celebrate these young men because they're the ones who are gonna be defending our country, like my son, Anthony Gaskins. And think the same of the young men you see now on both sides of this field. Anthony Gaskins, Navy Guard, 05 to 08, currently deployed on U.S. Naval assignment. With a big gun. Mom's happy. Yep. Steelman. George Jordan with the catch, number 84. You know, Steve Anderson looks like he's going to be part of a senior class never to have defeated the team from Navy. And that's a tough thing to swallow for members of either team. And conversely, of course, it looks like the Naval Academy is going to win. Oh, well, that one. Hang on, Malcolm Brown, touchdown. Right in the spot that Wyatt Middleton might have been in. Jordan Frazier mistimed the ball. And all of a sudden, touchdown. See Steelman, he's got some ability. I bet he's going to be 
a much better thrower a year from now. Still a little gimpy, you can tell. He, he was uh, knocked about toward the end of the first half. Just does cut the extra point. Alex Carlton inside the right upgrade. It's really not that complicated, is it? No. Middleton gets hurt. Here's Middleton's injury. And so they go, well, let's try the other guy. There's got to be a reason why he's not in Middleton's spot, right? Maybe he's not quite as good. So let's throw it right down the middle. Mistimed. Touchdown. Steelman, Malcolm Brown. That cuts the margin to 14. Navy leads at 31-17, 4.05 to go. Expect an onside kick here. Navy is aligned properly. They've got 10 men up front. Army is 0 for 1 onside kicks this year. And they'll squib kick uh, this one, and Greg Jones goes back and gathers it in and uh, has it at 38. Well, there is still one key play in this ball game. Right. And we, it came at the end of the first half. Well, it's a 14-point differential right now, and here's a 14-point play. Army going in for it. Seven you could have had, and seven you've given away. That's why these coaches go crazy. Every play is the potential game-changing play. Steelman on the bench, the uh, sophomore from Bowling Green, Kentucky. And here is Navy putting it in operation. Dobbs cuts up, ankle tackle. Steven Anderson got him. No, no lack of effort from yeah. Anderson. Time Rich call. Allerson takes a timeout. Good call. And you know, Vern, you talked about it's going to be tough for these Army seniors to lose four in a row to Navy. On the other hand, they are going to be the class forevermore that turned this program around. They've got a lot to be proud of as they got Army headed in the right direction going to a bowl game. Vern, don't get too distracted with that basketball you're going to be doing for the next couple yeah. weeks, okay? I'll try not to. I'll concentrate. Here's Dodge. He ran it right into that blitz, that safety blitz look. And another timeout. You know, we talk about the Army and what they've been proud of, and obviously they're on the way back. Well, let's focus on the other sideline, too, what these Navy seniors have accomplished if they can finish off this game. Nine years in a row, they've beaten Army. 4-0. and oh, Here's their record for the seniors. 4-0 and oh against Army. 3-1 and one against Notre Dame. 3-1 and one against Air Force. Boy, that's a good four-year run. Yeah. That'll get you promoted to Admiral on the fast track. Yes. They got to finish it off. Still a football game. But if they do, that's quite a record. 35 and 17 record. As you look at it right there, got a bowl game. And think about it, if they win the bowl game, they will have averaged nine wins a year. That's quite an accomplishment. And if they do win that game against San Diego State, it would be the 36th victory, and that would be the most wins for a Navy team over that period of time since 1909. Now, let's see if this is the big play that could kind of finish the game here. They're going to stop and force a punt. Yes. Army is out of timeouts, 344 to go. They're going to try to... See if they can get a cheap off sides. Mike Gann probably will line up six yards off the ball. <laughs> I'm this guessing one. he's not going to jump. Play clock at 20. Do not move. Do not move. Do not move. You hear that? Yeah. <laughs> that was. It sounded like a command, didn't it? Right. It sounded like they were in formation, and the drill sergeant said, "Do not move." not get a leadership position at Army if you jump off on that one after this one. This will be a 30-second timeout. You'd spend a long time on barracks duty. Right, yeah. Tonight on CBS, tis the season to gather the family and celebrate with Frosty the Snowman, Frosty Returns, and the flight before Christmas.
Plus, a new edition of 48 Hours Mystery tonight, only CBS. Well, Tim Spencer, Aaron Taylor, the Jeep post game show coming up right after we will wind things up here. And that's on CBS, of course. And now the Army punt return team scurries on, and Kyle Delahook is getting ready to punt, number 35. Josh Jackson is deep. Delahook is one of those who has been assigned to Marine Corps ground for the next five years. Not a good one. Nope. And a good bounce for Army. Not to the 39. Well, well, well. Score onside kick. 16 yard punt. See, it's a step by step process for Rich Ellerson as he's turning this program around. Step by step process. Remember what he said to us? We've got to learn to play well on the big stage. Navy knows already how to do that. We haven't learned it yet. Looks like they've taken the next step here today. Yeah, he particularly thought they fell short in that area against Notre Dame. And here's Steelman. Looks for help, gets out of bounds, stops the clock with 2.55 to go. And Buddy Green said the heck with that single safety stuff. He put two safeties back that time, gave it a, the old double zone look, and said, I'm not going to allow you to throw a cheap touchdown on me. you got to go first down after first down. Clock mark ready for play. Clock is running. Ball mark ready for play, rather. Here's. Oh, that one was almost intercepted. Same look. Kevin two, Edwards, yep. Two safeties. Dobbs for the day, 6 of 11. Steelman, 6 of 13. Ricky Dobbs had uh, big passways, including a 77 yarder. He was intercepted once. So, fairly even comparisons. We were talking with uh, Trent Steelman on Wednesday at West Point about his class schedule. Every cadet has to take a foreign language. His Portuguese. Got it. Now he needs to struggle to get out of bounds. No. Well, biggest play made by maybe the best defensive player out here for Navy Wyatt Middleton. You want to take a look at just your average class schedule? He's taking 18 credits in this, the fall of his senior year, engineering design methods, applied sensors and actuators. I missed that one. Mobile robotic design, which sounds futuristic. And then the one that we both shared, the quantitative methods for management. Whatever happened to physical education? Boy, Army caught a break there that ball was spotted very nicely for a first down instead of second and short so they got to stop the clock again Jared Hassan Steve Anderson I actually think Army felt that the ball was spotted short of a first down and that's why they ran a running play there Steelman and the receiver slips as he makes the catch. It's David Brooks, number 13. And the clock will run. Yep. And Army cannot stop the clock. All three timeouts having been used. Third and one. Here comes Hassan right now. Oh. Toss. First down at the 25-yard line. Yep, and a flag. Get, yep. I, th I think they're going to get mercy on this one from 73. Illegal block in the back. Number 73 offense. 10 yard penalty. Third down. I think it was on Matt Warwick, number 51. Coming right out there. Watch there out. There you are. Yep. Shoved from behind. So we'll adjust the clock here. Play clock up to 40. Injured player on the field for Navy. Inside the, uh, yeah, that's Jabari Tuwani, the junior out of Madison, Tennessee. Strongest player on the team has the highest squat in the 500s, but a cramp can do it to anybody.
6 1, 242. He wanted to play at Vanderbilt. They said he was too small. Might not be 6 1, to be truthful, though. Might be more like. 5 11? Yeah. You think? Might give him a couple inches. It's kind of a nice thing to do for him. Won't be. Six months, plenty tall. <laughs> 91 seconds remaining, third and eight. I'm not sure what the delay is here. Okay. Now we're set. Third down, eight, Army. Trailing by 14. Steele gets a good block. Delivers it first down. That's caught by Austin Barr, the junior out of Lake Oswego, Oregon, in the Portland area. That's a gain of 13. They'll reset the chain, and when they do, the clock starts again. First down 10, Steelman. Lobs it short. Mealy, number five, at the 17 yard line. 65 seconds to go. Second down and three. Steven will keep it. Foot race. Avoids a tackle. He's out of bounds. They're gonna, and they're going to flag it? I don't know. Didn't look like it. No. This was a called play. This was that quarterback draw again. Watch him come out. This is a called play. It's a keeper all the way. Everyone downfield is blocking. And usually, mm. usually you add yeah. half the distance to the goal on that one. 49 seconds remaining, first down and goal. How about this? That means that Army has outgained Navy in this football game now with these last two drives. Steelman. Uh oh. Oh, dropped. Matt Warwick, number 51. <laughs> Warwick reads the eyes. Could have had that one. Could have ended all the scoring for the day. So this game is not over. Second down. Look at the yards in this half. Yep. Some pressure got him at the 20. 40 seconds remaining. That was Aaron McCauley, number 29. Two outside linebackers have done a great job for this Navy defense. They've read the option all day and really handled those slot blocks all day. Third down, goal. Steelman fires incomplete. It'll be fourth down with 16 seconds to go. Ryan Cobbs, number 32, the intended receiver. Well, Army's not going to win this football game, but they sure should be proud of their effort in this game. Yep. You think about that 98-yard uh, fumble return and the significance of that one play coming less than a minute and a half before the break. When it looked like it was going to be 17-14, that made it 24-7 at the half. Here we go, fourth down, 16. They've got to get in the end zone. Steelman, still alive. Three lances. It's over. The clock stops on the change of possession, but for the ninth straight year. Brigade and midshipmen will celebrate. We missed the Gatorade bath. Yeah. Ah, but the joy of videotape. <laughs> it's a long way from Hawaii. Yes. Nine, 
uninterrupted. Army will be better next year. Navy has a lot of players returning. They've got a quarterback next year, Chris Proctor, that's going to be the real deal also for Navy. It'll be a great matchup again next year. Jeep post game show coming up. The final here, 31 17. Rich Ellerson, again, Neil Matalolo, the old, old friends. So the 111th Army Navy game is in the books. And the Naval Academy has defeated Army by a count of 31 17. Been a wonderful day in Philadelphia. Thank you for joining us. For Tracy Wolfson, Gary Danielson, Vern Lundquist, our thanks.